This video is sponsored by Amalina Children's Haven. My name is Chirwa Atakara. I'm an entrepreneur and I have two children. I have a two and a half year old boy and a two and a half month old baby girl. Okay, so for my first, it was a bit dramatic because I'd only been dating his father for about six months. So like any relationship, we were still getting to know each other, you know, working through all the dynamics of a new relationship. And just a few days before my expected period date, I started to feel kind of funny. So I suspected it. But I was praying and just hoping that, you know, it wasn't that and they would eventually show up. So on the second day, two days after the date, nothing had happened. So I pretty much just had a quick conversation with him that this is what's going on and I was going to buy the test. So I got the test and we did it together. And there was one line. So I was very happy. <laughs> so I remember I just left it and we just carried on talking and chatting pretty much relieved that you know there was not going to be a baby and somewhere along the conversation he looked at it again and we realized that there was a second faint line so it was i mean it was a lot for both of us to handle we didn't really know how to take it what to do it just really came as quite a shock <laughs> so for the next week no one spoke about it we just carried on as normal like nothing happened and eventually we had the conversation and we had decided to you know keep it and just go forward with our relationship and see how best we could you know manage our situation so that was it for my first and with my second it was also quite surprising because I had suffered a miscarriage and had some side effects. So I'd been bleeding on and off for about three months. So I'd complained to my doctor because we happened to be out of the country at the time. And he had advised that as soon as I get back, I should come in and see him. So once we got back, I realized that the bleeding stopped. As soon as I got back, the, the bleeding just stopped. So I had just decided that I'll wait a week to see if anything happens and if there's anything unusual, then I'll go back and see him, like we had discussed. So nothing happened that week and then I booked the appointment and I went in to see him. So he just advised that since we were actively trying to be pregnant again following the miscarriage, he wanted to put me on progesterone because that would help, you know, to limit any mishap. So I was booked for the following week to come and start the progesterone treatment. So just a couple of days before the appointment that I was supposed to see him, I started feeling funny again. And it felt like pregnancy. By this point, I'd been pregnant a few times because I've had two miscarriages before this. So I started to feel all the usual symptoms and decided to just buy the test. And when we checked, I was pregnant. So that the second time obviously came as a surprise, yes, because it seemed I, I felt like I had issues. Bleeding for almost three months is not normal. So I definitely wasn't expecting that, you know, it would happen then. I thought we'd have to do some treatments when I come back. And it just happened quite easily. So that was brilliant news for us after two losses. It's something that we were very much looking forward to and we embraced it wholeheartedly. It was really good. Okay, so the part that I really enjoyed about being pregnant was just the natural joy and happiness that I had. It's something that I can't actually put my finger on and explain because especially for my first, um, because it was completely unplanned and unexpected. I didn't think that I'll be that happy about it and it was something that I couldn't control even though it was a slightly difficult situation. We had things to navigate like family, how to break the news to my parents, how everyone will accept it, even with work having to put things on pause and you know getting into that. I 
before it happened I thought you know I'll have a really hard time but I was so happy that it gave me so much energy and positivity about everything I started taking better care of myself I was eating better I feel like I was a nicer person even to be around <laughs> like people talk about you know when you're hormonal you your temper is all over the place pregnant women are snappy and all of that I don't think that was me at all I mean maybe the people close to me would say otherwise but gener generally I just felt a lot better about myself and about everything else really so I like that about being pregnant just the awareness that you know I was carrying you know a child and it was it was a very heavy and um, intimate moment for me and the other part that I would say I enjoyed was preparation for the baby that was like incredibly exciting the shopping um, <laughs> getting the space you know where he'll sleep together and also even just the realization that I had started a family because although the relationship was quite new it was a good relationship and we had you know it was a perspective relationship let me say or we were working towards you know something solid so the baby coming in although unexpected or unplanned made me realize very quickly that in fact this was you know me starting my family and that was also really exciting for me because I feel I'm naturally nurturing and quite motherly so for the first time you know it was going to be my own child I have nephews and nieces that I've been mothering since I was a child myself so I really enjoyed that aspect of it too being that I was now carrying my own and what that whole journey would be like starting a family having our own home all of that stuff was you know still like was playing on my mind and I was really happy about that. With my first, I didn't have much trouble with the pregnancy itself. I had a lot of um, nausea in the first month, like the morning sickness, it was really bad. So for the first three months, I was home all the time, didn't go anywhere. The few times I had to go for my hospital appointments, I literally have to have a bucket in the car. So the nausea and the throwing up was terrible. I was in bed throughout. So that was hard. But like I'm saying, even those were enjoyable. Like I go and throw up and I come back and write it in my journal. Like I was that pregnant woman. You don't want to be around me. It was annoying. But um, so yes, I didn't really consider the natural aspects of pregnancy as a problem or as a challenge. I was excited to be going through them because I well understood that they were normal. But again, if I have to mention, if anything was difficult, it would be that we were unmarried. And generally in our society and culture, that is something that nobody <laughs> works towards. So once it happens, you're going to face you know, some issues, um, ridicule, gossip, all sorts so there were little things here and there that would make it slightly uncomfortable but ultimately my, my spirit was never dampened i was really and truly grateful for the gift although the circumstances were not the greatest um, and i also felt very proud of myself for deciding to keep the baby because i knew that i mean it could have gone anyway and i had to gracefully go through it to make sure that not even to make sure that but to just not let the situation get the better of me and anytime that anything that wasn't too pleasant happened i just encouraged myself again that i had decided to do this and i was going to go through with it all the way and nothing was going to bring down my spirit so that's pretty much it for challenges for my first but with my second, I had a bit more of, let me say, challenges or issues with the pregnancy itself. Um, initially, like I said, I started progesterone treatments, which was a suppository that I had to take every day for the entire first trimester. And that wasn't too difficult. It's just like a pill. So that, that, that was fine. But 
because I had had two miscarriages before then, I wasn't high risk, but you know, they had to be a little more careful and monitor the pregnancy quite closely. And on, I think my one visit before I moved into my second trimester, my doctor noticed that I had something called an amniotic band. It's literally like um, a thick piece of, if we're seeing it physically, maybe like a cloth that is cut like a band that separates um, the womb into two. So it makes it look like there's one region above and another region below. And the sac that the baby was forming in was below. So it looks like my womb is um, divided into two and the space on top, there's the band and then the baby's below. So he mentioned it and just made me aware that this is what it is and gave a little bit of um, some knowledge about what causes it sometimes and what effects it also has. And the long and short of the whole thing is that it can be a bit problematic as the baby is growing because naturally, because it's divided the womb, first of all, we're talking about having less space for the baby to grow in. But more importantly, it can be threatening if it's, um, the baby's movement is hindered by its position. So he just pretty much explained also that there's nothing that they can do about it. It's not something that you can be given medication to um, have it disappear or thin out and there's not something that you can be operated on or anything. So we literally just have to wait and see how you know it develops. So when I came back home, of course my inquisitive mind went on Google, started reading and you know just trying to find out a bit more about this thing. And that was very scary because the kind of things that were coming up, they were not the best, you know. Um, the very least of them was like the cleft lip, which some children are born with. So this amniotic band is what causes that defect. Um, at the very worst, it causes things like amputation of limbs. Yeah, so if it gets very thin, it can actually, you know, snap off the baby's limb if they move around it. So once I did that extra reading and you can just imagine, I just scared myself and, you know, just also knew that there's really nothing that they, anyone can do about it. I just have to pray that, you know, our story is different. It doesn't end up that way. But in the end, it, it all quite worked out well. Okay, on the day of delivery for my first, I had scheduled a pregnancy shoot. So it was a Sunday, the photographer came, one of my close friends came to help me. And we took all the pictures, about five different settings. We had a lot of fun. So I spent the whole day taking pictures. So by 8 p, they left around 7 p.m. So when they left, I just went to shower, went to relax and, you know, I'd had a long day and being pregnant as well, I felt extra tired. So I was just resting when my, my baby's dad then <laughs> came in and he was due to travel the following morning. So he wanted me to help him to put his outfits together and stuff. And I felt just unusually tired. So. I did, I went, we started sorting out the things, but whilst we were packing the stuff, I started to feel like some pain. And with that pregnancy, I never had any pain, not even cramping. So the minute I started to feel that pain, I suspected that, you know, it could be very early stages of labor. And I was 37 weeks as well, so I knew that would be happening any day. But when I told my partner then, he didn't believe me because the whole week he had been planning that trip and I was telling him it's too close to my delivery date, so don't go. And he said he had to go, so he'll go. So when he was packing and I was doing that, he felt like I'm just trying to keep him in Accra. And I had no reason to just try and keep him in Accra. So he, I'll say it, I feel this, he'll laugh it off and say, you give me my jeans and whatnot and we'll be packing. So a whole hour probably went past and I had felt maybe three or four things that he had written off as not labor. 
so the, obviously the environment was still very light i was laughing about it myself because i wasn't really sure so we finished packing he went to bed first and i was still just hanging around like i felt like I can't sleep on this pain. Let me wait and wait another hour, see what will happen. So I had a movie in and I was watching and then I realized that it was getting more intense. So by then it was about, it was just a few minutes shy of midnight. So I started to monitor it because I'd been told you can time the contractions and whatnot. So I had an app ready because obviously I've been waiting for this day for God knows how long. <laughs> I had my app ready, started to, you know, put in the time and how long, you know, the pain was lasting. And there was no rhythm to it. Some would take five minutes and then 15 minutes, nothing would happen. And then six minutes, something will come. So I'm like, oh, this thing is not labor. Let me just sleep. So I also went to bed. Then around 4 a.m., some pain woke me up. And that one was no pain that I could ignore. I knew immediately that it was real. And my partner was due to leave at about seven. So the plan was that he would come, I mean, we'll go to the airport together and then like he'll sort himself out and then I'll also come back home. So when it started again around four, obviously I woke him up like now it's really painful. So I suspect this is it. So immediately he cancelled his trip and we just started making our way just putting things in place to go to the hospital luckily the hospital was literally just up our streets so i had my bag packed already once he cancelled his travel plans we were on our way to the hospital delivery for my second was very eventful um, I was scheduled for a C-section on the Friday after you know, my labor had been delayed for almost a week. We came to an agreement and I was booked in and scheduled for the C-section. So in the morning, you know, they came in and had a brief talk with me just to prepare me for surgery, filled the forms and all of that, and was prepared for theater. Now, once the, we got into the theater and the anesthesia was administered, immediately I started feeling very weak, kind of faint. And I realized that I couldn't breathe, but I couldn't, I didn't even have the words to explain how I was feeling. I, I was just moving my hands and telling the anesthetist and the nurse who was with him that, you know, I wasn't feeling well. <clears throat> so he tried to find out for me what, what exactly I was feeling. And because I couldn't breathe, I couldn't talk. So from how, you know, I acted it out, like I literally couldn't breathe. So he did something on his end and then they gave me an oxygen mask and slowly it started coming together. So I've, I remember feeling a little bit of anxiety, like I panicked a bit because I could tell that I was reacting, you know, negatively, at least from my assumption from the anesthesia. And, you know, after they gave me the mask, I could breathe again. So I was a bit relieved, but immediately I started feeling nausea. And I hadn't felt nausea in so long because, you know, it's part of first trimester troubles. So I'm like, why am I feeling nauseous? I wasn't even sure if it was really nausea, but a couple of seconds after and now it was uncontrollable. I knew that I was going to throw up. So immediately they brought like a pan, put it next to me. And mind you, I was on the theater. Um, I don't know what to call it, like bed. So. I couldn't get up or anything so they had to put the pan literally by my head and I started throwing up. This went on for maybe 10-15 minutes so I really wasn't feeling my best. In that moment I saw that my husband had come in, you know the curtain had been fixed um, and I could hear the voices obviously so I knew that my doctor was in but I couldn't tell if they had started or not if they were about to start the procedure. And I think intentionally or quite deliberately, they don't tell you when they are about to do it. I don't know if that's how it happens everywhere, but whilst I was vomiting, as soon as it calmed down, the next thing I heard was my baby crying. And it was a bit confusing because I was kind of disoriented. I had just started to feel a little bit better after I threw up. But then the next thing was the sound of my baby. And um, 
it was a bit confusing honestly in that moment i couldn't fully appreciate you know the you know the brilliance of what was happening but i did take uh, held her for a few minutes and then they took her away to clean her and then they started stitching me up and preparing me for recovery now this is where it started to get a little dramatic once i got into the recovery ward less than maybe what 15 20 minutes i realized i was bleeding and for me that was very startling because for some reason i never associated c-section with bleeding any kind of bleeding because my little knowledge or my perception and assumptions about it was that because they're cutting you open and taking the baby from your stomach area there was no bleeding involved as in vaginal bleeding because literally nothing is happening there so for me to start bleeding after the surgery i panicked but the nurses who came in assured me that it was normal bleeding is expected and then i started to calm down but i started to lose so much blood that it really i i, I couldn't help but feel you know worried because there was so much blood i was basically lying on a padded mat and that mat was changed eight to twelve times within the period of about two hours like almost every 10 15 minutes it was full of blood and they were clots it wasn't even just like liquid runny blood it was scary it was it was really scary and i couldn't help but panic although i had you know a lot of confidence in the hospital that i was in and the medical team and my doctor i was still quite troubled because for one thing i didn't know that there's any blood involved with having a c-section and then secondly the amount of blood so the nurses came in and said they had spoken to my doctor and he'd asked them to give me something. So they gave me something in a drip. I can't say I remember exactly what it was called. And my doctor came in and explained to me what was happening. And basically, in summary, after the baby comes out, your uterus is supposed to contract back. And for some, most women, it's supposed to happen very naturally. It will contract and you bleed a bit, but that's how, you know, it, I think it gets back to its original size but when your uterus is not contracting then it makes you bleed or like hemorrhage and that's what was happening my uterus was not contracting and from what he was explaining it's not something that they can even tell beforehand they would never have known until they cut you and take the baby out that um, your uterus will not contract or is not contracting so there are a few things that they can do to try and help and one was whatever drug they had given me intravenously. So we're supposed to wait and see how that um, plays out. And they did that and I was still bleeding a lot. Um, I was bleeding even more because it was making, it was kind of giving me cramps. It was like when my, I feel the contraction coming and then it expels a huge clot when it releases. So I was really getting worried, honestly. And I just didn't know what it was. And with these things, <clears throat> I feel like when you're going through pregnancy, delivery, and all its um, related processes, sometimes, I don't know if it's hormonal, but even for me, I'm usually very antsy and scared at every, almost every juncture because I feel like you hear so many horror stories sometimes that you don't know at what point something went wrong for someone else and they ended up dying or, you know, something crazy ended up happening to them. And when things are happening to you, I'm wondering like, you know, is this it? Or is this, you know, going to end in something that is, you know, even completely worse? So it was just overwhelming and quite scary. But fortunately for me, one, my doctor came back and discussed that, okay, the, what they gave me intravenously didn't work too well. The next thing is they have to try and physically massage um, my stomach or my uterus to try and get it to start contracting. And the last thing would be to go back to theatre and intervene that way. But the, he was hoping that with a physical massage it would help. And thankfully that helped. It started to stimulate, you know, some kind of contracting and the bleeding slowed down over the next maybe four or five hours and slowed down, thankfully. So I, you know, was relieved, feeling like, okay, this is, you know, that's it. I'm glad that I survived this part. And then before I know it, I'm itching. 
and this itching is not like normal itching i've not felt anything like this it was like i was losing my mind i felt like there were hives or like something is coming out of my skin but there was nothing and it's all over like i didn't know where to scratch first literally i'm scratching my face my husband is scratching my back the nurse is scratching my legs i am scratching my arms it was horrible and itching can be like <laughs> more difficult to deal with than even pain because it controls your mind I, I i could not even think it was really difficult that went on for at least a good hour and a half or two um and obviously i complain and then they get some med so that it can go down it was really intense for some hours but it kind of um went down slowly and i still had remnants of it all through for about a day and a half or two but honestly delivery was quite challenging with my second because i felt like the side effects whether from the c-section itself or the surgery or the drugs you, you don't even know what exactly you're reacting from because that night i woke up the next morning and i was swollen i hadn't looked in the mirror so i didn't know my face and everything was even swollen but my hands my feet like were huge and I thought that was just, you know, fluid leaving the upper parts and like relocating elsewhere. So I wasn't too worried. But when they helped me to get up and go and shower in the morning and I saw myself in the mirror, like it took some seconds to, I, I don't know if you've ever seen yourself and not realized that it was you. It's the scariest feeling. It's like looking in the mirror and I, don't, I didn't see myself immediately. And it took some seconds to realize that that was actually me. My, I can't explain it. My, my face was huge, my eyes were huge, my nose was huge, my ears were swollen, my lips were massive and I was shocked, like it, it literally shocked my system. So that was also another thing and I didn't know, you know, if it meant that something else was going wrong. You know when you are quite sensitive in that moment, your mind can be all over the place. I thought my nose swelling up could mean that my lungs were also swelling on the inside and then the next minute I'll collapse, like... I can be dramatic so it was very scary and yet again I needed an intervention for that to also calm down. Once that went then I had a very severe case of acid reflux. It's heartburn but it's so painful it literally feels like your chest is I don't know shifting or moving or something. It was really bad and that happened in the night so it came with its own scare because when something wakes you from your sleep and it's pa that painful it brings a whole different dimension of panic so i had that as well and you know i was giving medication for that also so in combination all these you know different things happening at different times it was almost like when one goes and is treated then something else shows up uh, my doctor gracefully took his time to explain to me though that every woman does go through certain side effects and it, it is rare though that one person would have more than one or two or three like I was having but um, I still feel it's prudent to share because I just think that if I was equipped with more information i.e. if I knew that okay this happens to some people when it's happening to me, I know that it's part of the process and I'm not scared. And this is the only reason why I'm sharing this, not to scare anybody or like make it seem like such an overwhelming thing to go through. But I definitely think that knowing what is possible and what's normal definitely helps you go through it a lot easier. So that was it for me for delivery of my second. With my first, I think everything went pretty much how I was hoping it would go. There was nothing too dramatic, except I'd done a lot of research being the first time that I was pregnant and having a baby. So there were things that I expected to happen in order. For example, my water, after I get the contractions to know that, okay, something is happening. I was expecting my water to break. Then they say, you will see your mucus plug fall out. And you know, there were things that I just felt like would go in sequence. But even when we got to the hospital and they'd done the physical examination to confirm that indeed it was labor and I dilated two centimeters, hours after, almost six hours after, 
there was no progression. Still, my water hadn't broken yet. Um, I hadn't seen any physical sign that labor had started, this mucus plug and all these things. Nothing was happening, but the pain was gradually intensifying. So at that point, the midwife came in and explained that she would have to go in herself and break my waters, which I was okay with. But I didn't realize how uncomfortable that would be. It's similar to the physical exam where they literally put their whole fist inside you, which is extremely painful. But this time with a pair of scissors. So if it's even scary, seeing someone come at you like that with a pair of scissors, I was like, trying very hard not to be dramatic and not be that woman in labor <laughs> with all the drama and antics so she came and did that rather quickly i didn't feel it as much as i thought it was very fast and the water started gushing out and there was a lot of water like it shocked me how much water there was it came in stages so once she'd done that i was told that labor would progress rather quickly but it didn't. Um, fast forward 5 p.m. thereabout. I'd been at the hospital for quite some time, almost 12 hours, and nothing had happened, you know. So I was very tired by that point, quite hungry, just a little stressed. Like I didn't know when it was going to happen. And I started getting a little bit scared as well because it had gotten painful, but I knew I was nowhere near actual true labor where like you're ready to push mind you i was still two centimeters dilated so i was wondering if i'm in this much pain right now at two centimeters what's the eight and nine and the full like dilation going to feel like and i was weak i felt like i don't have energy to even do this work so i asked for an epidural just then i'd previously discussed with my doctor that i was open to it but i wanted to wait to make the decision on the day if i felt that i could do without it then i wouldn't so they were aware that i may ask for it but by the time i asked they actually said the anesthetist is not around but they called him and long story short he ended up coming but the man was not very nice to me <laughs> if i should put it because i was kind of pleading with him to wait and administer the epidural during a break because when you have the contraction there's a period where nothing is happening and you are not in pain and then another contraction comes so i wanted him to wait during that period to do the epidural and he was just impatient that he has a lot to do basically i should sit still bend my head just pushing pushing my head down nudging my shoulders left and right it was very uncomfortable so he put the first needle in it wasn't very painful just a little pinch and then takes it out again says oh sorry he made a mistake and he does it a second time and then takes it out again so at this point i'm wondering what on earth is going on here and he does it a third time and explains that it was a wrong needle so he's using a different needle and i remember being very worried at that point because there are all these scary stories about epidurals and even just doing it can be a bit frightening so for someone to be playing those games on my back and just give me a sense that he wasn't he didn't really know what he was doing it was quite troubling and knowing that he had already done it i felt like has the harm already been done like is this reversible am i going to feel anything am i going to be paralyzed like a lot of things were running through my head but i didn't want my emotions to also get the better part of me so i remained calm and then he finished so once you know that was out i was told to lie down and immediately started feeling just a bit funny my heart was beating really fast i was feeling a bit faint and they explained that all this was normal and they started checking put me up to all the machines and started checking the vitals and all that and i just realized that slowly i started to come back i started to feel okay and i started to lose sensation in my lower half in my legs particularly so by then i started to relax also because i knew that oh, okay it's working and then the pain was gradually going down until i couldn't feel pretty much any pain when there's a contraction i feel slight tightening but it wasn't painful you just know that there's a contraction coming so at this point it's you know it just changed the entire environment although 
before we went too stressed now i started to really get excited because the pain aspect was gone so i could focus on you know the big thing that was coming being that we're about to meet our son and you know we were just over the moon like we could not wait when is it just happening but the good thing was once i got the epidural like it started to happen quickly the contractions started coming very much closer together from 15 minutes came down to 10 came down to five so within an hour i had progressed to about eight centimeters and then they came in and told us that they are calling the doctor he's coming in and that was like the moment i was so happy my husband got out his camera <laughs> like we were just so thrilled and my doctor came in and it was the same doctor I've been seeing, you know, throughout for the whole nine months. By this point, he literally felt like family and it's like, you know, we're welcoming this baby. It was just a really, 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 really exciting moment. So within, I'd say, 30 minutes, you know, he had taken the baby out. The delivery was quite simple. I couldn't feel a lot. The doctor actually has to tell me when to push. So three, four, five major pushes and there he was in all his glory and it was, it was quite amazing. When I first saw my son, I was very emotional. I didn't cry but I was very emotional. My hands were shaking and I was just so overjoyed. Um, he wasn't even, he didn't cry and he wasn't breathing properly. So there was a bit of panic in the room and the doctor said to me he wanted me to bond with him like he wanted me to hold him for however many seconds and they had to take him away to do something <laughs> like work on him a bit so that you know he could you know they're supposed to cry what exactly the reasons are i can't tell you but it's part of whatever protocols that they observe to make sure that the child is healthy so that hadn't happened and i think there were some issues with his breathing as well but when they gave him to me, I still couldn't focus on all that negativity. It was like, my son is here. And it was like, I was overwhelmed. I was extremely happy. I held him for a few seconds. And I'd always said that after the doctor, I wanted to be the first person to hold him. And I wanted to pray for that child. I'd always said that throughout my pregnancy. And I, I was always worried that I'll forget. Or in that moment, there'll be too much pain or something else will be going on and I won't be able to do it. But I had some calmness and stillness. A few seconds ago. But I said my short prayer like for him. And for me, that moment was everything because someone had advised me to do that. And I believed in what I was doing. For me, I didn't care who was around, who didn't believe in it, who thought it was funny or silly. I was doing my thing. And it was almost like there was no one else in the room. Going home from the hospital with my first baby was, you know, the highlight of the week. We had been waiting so long. I had met him, but for the other family members, you know, it, it would be their first. Um, because I had the natural delivery, the following day we were discharged. So not many people, very few people came to the hospital. So the majority of the rest of the family were waiting at home to meet him. And for my husband's family, you know, it was his first child also, and um, they were just over the moon because I think no one had really, like I said, it wasn't planned, and no one saw it coming. So his mom particularly, like, was beside herself. Everyone was at his house waiting, and the hospital to our home where we lived was very close. It's literally five minutes. We walked to the hospital when I was in labor. So it's not a long drive at all. The doctor came in, we did all the pediatrician checks and we got our stuff and we're ready to go. When we got home, you know, my immediate family wasn't present. It was my husband's family and, you know, all his sisters were there, his parents, some cousins. It was just like a whole big, you know, little celebration on my end as well. My mom, her twin sister, my aunties had flown from London to make sure that, you know, they would come for their birth, but they had missed it by a day. But they were all waiting, you know, at home to welcome this baby boy. And it really was special. My best friend from high school also came just for the birth. 
So there was like a lot of excitement that we were coming back home and everyone was just really thrilled that finally they were meeting this boy. So breastfeeding, before I had children, I'd never really given it any thought. I thought it was normal, natural, easy. If anything, you just wonder how, you know, the milk will work. And for me, I thought, oh, okay, breastfeeding will make my breast bigger. So I was looking forward to it. I was excited, happy that maybe I'll move from a B cup to maybe a D or E. So if I had any, you know, thoughts about breastfeeding, that was it. That's the only thing I was looking forward to. Now, when the baby came, I felt like there's no milk. I thought it would be natural. As soon as the baby comes, maybe I'll see the milk will start spilling or something. I wasn't sure how the whole thing would work. But the baby came, they gave him to me to, you know, feed. And I was telling them, oh, my milk is not ready yet. Like, I can't feed him now. I said, oh, I'm really full. I have to try if I do it gently, you know, it will start to come and all that. So we tried, but he had trouble latching. So for the first day, I couldn't breastfeed. And unfortunately, I was actually readmitted at the hospital. So because I had to be away for an extra three days and he was home with my husband, I had to express milk to be taken to him. So they just, I had um, an electric pump, which looked very nice and sophisticated. I assumed that I would do a brilliant job and fill the bottles in no time. I hooked this thing up and more than an hour waiting just some little milk i can't even it's not even up to one ounce some drops at the bottom of the bottle so it was very disappointing but i could tell that i was full like my boobs are all the way here so i thought no there must be something wrong with this thing so a nurse comes in and then she's laughing and she's like you these um dada ba people we go and buy all these sophisticated machines and they don't even work and that I should send my husband to go and buy me a manual breast pump and come. So I was thinking, look at this girl. She doesn't even know what she's talking about. Do you know the type of breast pump that I'm holding? Like, I'm not even going to mind here. So I was there doing pumping, pumping, pumping. Nothing was happening. At this point, I couldn't even be, you know, too embarrassed to ask for her help. I called her back and she came and just repeated that. that most of the electronic ones don't do the job well. So I needed a manual pump. And literally, like magic, once he brought me the manual pump, I had four bottles within an hour. And, you know, for the next few days, that's how it went on. The rest of my breastfeeding journey was a bit turbulent. I had, you know, sore nipples. I had blocked ducts. Um, I had, an, like, an excessive supply of milk also, which is good. But it was also, like, difficult to manage. Like, there's always milk spilling, you're running out of pads all the time and it can be painful because your breasts get really full and if the baby's um, demand doesn't match then you're constantly in pain, it gives you headaches. So it was a lot and I didn't really foresee all of that trouble with breastfeeding. For my second it's been a lot easier. Um, it may be because now I also know how to handle myself a bit more so I haven't had too much trouble with breastfeeding. And my breast size didn't magically go up. By the time my weaned him off, my breast went back to normal. It was like no baby ever came out. So that was disappointing too. With teething for my son, I wasn't expecting the teeth to show up as early as they did. I don't know why I thought maybe it has to be about a year. Like a child should be able to chew meat before their teeth shows up. I mean, that's what I was thinking. Like from three months or four months, I started seeing teeth and I'm like, wow, children these days, like you get teeth so early. But apparently it's natural um, and everyone has their teeth coming at different stages and ages. Um, teething also wasn't too much of a headache. Naturally, if I don't even see the tooth show up, I won't be able to tell from his mannerisms or his behavior that something was wrong with him. Because usually they would say when, you know, the child is seething, they are very um, e easily bothered. They cry a lot and all of that. But I didn't experience too much of that. I just realized that he seemed to have diarrhea when he was seething. So if anything changed, that was it. There were more frequent stool or bowel movements. 
and a lot more fussing like in his mouth that his hands were constantly moving into his mouth um, beyond that there was there was no major issue with teething either so for the most part i don't feel helpless if i have to be honest i never really feel overwhelmed by the new role or position of being a mother and having you know a whole life entrusted to you but i can admit that there are times where you're not sure what to do and what is the right thing to do and you can be a bit anxious about if what you're doing is the best and i think just naturally it just comes to me that just as you know, even delivering them is a natural process that our body is equipped to do. I feel that I'm inherently capable of much more than I realize because sometimes something happens and I don't have the chance to ask for advice or to ask someone what to do. And I do what I think is best and I end up finding out that, oh, this is what you should have done anyway. And I think those little moments just encourage you and boost you and let you really know that we are inherently capable of looking after our own. I think I had probably had more scary moments with pregnancy, like I'm saying with the anxieties of not knowing how the child will show up, particularly with my second and, you know, that band. I wasn't sure if I'll give birth to her and there'll be only one hand and things like that. So those were the scares. But um, with my son, I also didn't have anything. We had quite... A, an uneventful journey in terms of um, drama or anything scary happening but I do remember that he woke up with a limp one day he just woke up and he could barely stand on one leg and was obviously limping and he hadn't fallen nothing you know dramatic had happened so we were just clueless and lost as to how he could be limping um, you we felt up the whole leg he didn't seem to react or like he didn't seem to be in pain, but he clearly had a limp. Took him to the hospital, ran all kinds of tests, and everything was coming out positive, but the child was limping. So we really didn't know, you know, what was causing this strange limp. And it caused me a lot of stress, anxiety, and as you know, if you go on Google, there's every bad thing under the sun waiting for you. So I was seeing all sorts of things, meningitis and like crazy things. And when it comes to that, my husband is the opposite of me. Like, you cannot stress that guy. He was completely calm and he just, you know, helped me to understand that we just needed to be patient and, you know, do what we needed to do on our end medically and basically pray and leave the rest to God. And thankfully, you know, the doctors didn't know what to advise because all the tests came out clean so they just said to wait it out and see if it progresses or if it gets worse or whatever they were ex ex they were suspecting sickle cell in the very early stages because at the time the weather was kind of cold but every like i said every test came out clean and his teacher said when i whenever i dropped him he took his shoes off and didn't want to wear them again so she suspected that it could be from his shoes and initially when she said it, I thought this woman is not serious. Like, do you think the shoes that the child is wearing can give him this limp? But I didn't comment. I just kept it in my head and I didn't wear him those shoes again. And we saw that the limp disappeared. So honestly, I don't know if 100% it was the shoes, but I believe that it, it was really just the shoes. And once we no longer wore him those shoes, he was fine and there was nothing to worry about. So that would probably be the scariest thing that I've had to deal with as a parent. Okay, the hardest part about being a mother for me is a change to my lifestyle. Like that has been very, very difficult and I'm still, you know, going through it and seeing how best I can keep my sanity, um, you know, and also keep my presence and who I am and what I aspire to do. Um, that has been hard because motherhood takes over everything. It takes over your body, it takes over your thoughts, it takes over pretty much a lot of your life and you kind of have to fight to keep a certain balance and to keep some form of normalcy in your routine. I feel that for some, it sounds silly but to a point I even envied mothers who 
had their routines you know set out that they had to return back to work at a certain point because when you don't have things set out for you that way you may feel like you know it's such a burden that oh i have to leave my child you know at a you know maybe three months four months and go back to work those mothers complain also but it can be also very hard if you're on the other end for example i was working for myself so i didn't have to return back to work per se at a fixed time but i had to try and let you know my child my child then and my children now um, get the best but still not let my work life be compromised and i'm still trying to find that balance because i'm doing both and it's really not easy because sometimes it's almost like if you if you commit or if you give too much off on one side the other side suffers and it can be difficult to find a balance so that none suffer like i want my children to have the best of me and you know be the best that they can be but at the same time i want to still you know strive for the things that i believe in and it, it can be difficult so that for me has been the hardest part like i'm still trying to be the best mother but not lose myself joys of being a mother <laughs> um i think for me, motherhood has been a bit of a spiritual experience for me because I've been very humbled by, you know, by my children, by pregnancy, by even delivery, by conception. Things that before I didn't give any thought at all. Now, like I just pause and I think about it and I just end up at the same place every time and it's like, wow, God is just like awesome. I don't have quite the words for it. Um, for me, the biggest joy really is seeing these children that are a product of you. You know, they have, they've come from a union. Sometimes I think about it like someone that I didn't know a year ago and like now we've met and now there's a little person who is half me, half him. And you know, it goes on from there, generations from just this one union, let me just say. And it's just been so profound for me personally you know and obviously just looking at them there's something about your child that is different from any other human being that you interact with i don't know i definitely cannot say that i love any person even more even my husband like <laughs> he'll have to bear with me on this you know there, there, there's, there are different kinds of love i believe but there's nothing like the love that you have for your child and seeing these children that you know are a part of us that we bring into this world every day even in their wild antics and even in their moments where you know you're unhappy with them and all of that it's just very special you know to go through all of it so for me the highlights of motherhood there are so many levels to it i can't really pick one being equipped to be a mother excites me seeing them be what they are seeing and watching them grow change you know their personalities and their character come out it's just like one long movie that is still rolling in and i'm still seeing the joys every day it doesn't get old. So for my final words, I want to share a testimony and I'll make this as brief as I can. Um, after I had my first, like I said, I had two miscarriages and I was hoping to get pregnant again. Um, my friend invited me for her child's naming ceremony. I went and they gave these little souvenir bags at the end of the ceremony. But it also had, you know, small chops and a drink and all that. So whilst I was going home, I ate part of it and then I passed by my auntie's house to visit her. And her security man, who I'm quite close to, was being chatty and I felt like he just wanted some of the thing. That's why he's making all the noise. So I just picked the bag and I gave it to him. Fast forward, two days after on WhatsApp, I have um, a WhatsApp group with five of my closest girlfriends and they all started posting pictures of this little, it's like a frame plaque that has Bible verses on them. And each person had, you know, placed theirs as a strategic place in their home, like on their side table, in their living room. 
and they had such sweet messages like one said something along the lines of like i'll never leave you or forsake you and then the verse that that comes from in the bible written underneath and i thought oh this is really cute like where is this from and they all said oh it, it was part of the souvenirs from the naming ceremony so i was really gutted because like i said i had given mine out to the security guy who clearly has no need for that thing and i felt like i've missed out on my special message because everyone kind of related to their messages so my friend promised me that she had a lot more and she'll just send me one during the week so the following day i woke up and i was expecting then but it was quite early in my pregnancy and i hadn't really told many people so I told my husband, you know, I wanted to go and sort out my antenatals and book at the hospital and all of that. So I left. And to cut a very long story short, that appointment with the doctor ended up as a disaster because he prescribed a wrong medication for me. I came home, took those drugs and I lost the baby that night. Like I bled continuously and it was literally a horror story. Um, so after that, I mean, I spent two days in hospital, came out and had to do another procedure and finally came back home four days later. Now, when my husband and I got home, you can imagine I was very, very sad, very upset, like, and angry also because it wasn't a natural miscarriage. It came out of a lot of negligence from the hospital and the particular doctors involved. So I had a lot of emotions like all over the place, but I was not happy. As soon as we got home, my security man comes running to me with a small box and it didn't look familiar. So I was like, where is this from? And I wasn't in the mood, you know, for chatting. So I'm like, where's this from? He says, oh, someone basically came to drop it off for me. So I opened it then. And as soon as I took it out of the box, I realized that it was one of those plagues that my friends had received during the week and then it immediately connected that oh the security man had probably given it to my auntie's driver and returned it so this was you know the message that I originally would have received and what was written on it was I will not cause you pain without allowing something new to be born and for me, when I stood out there in front of my house and I read that plague, it's been the third most humbling moment in my whole life. And the first and second would be when I met my two children for the first time. And in fact, in some ways, in a spiritual sense, this surpasses like any other thing that I've ever gone through. For some reason, and I mean for like the obvious reason, I just felt so humbled and so at peace because for me that message just told me that god was with me and what was even more profound about this was the fact that if i got that plague the week before it would not have had any essence it would probably have even scared me a little bit because i'll be like what is this about everyone's messages were so sweet and why am i getting this message but god made sure that i didn't receive that message before my time and at the time that I needed to hear that message, he delivered it to me. And that gave me so much peace that originally we were still in the hospital. Like I made my husband drop all charges. I never cried about it again. I never, like I didn't speak about it. I just took it out of my mind and I was confident that I was getting another baby. If I knew the gender, I would have started shopping already because I was that sure because God had spoken clearly and no one was going to take that away from me. Like, even if you're an unbeliever and you feel like it's a coincidence, I did not care. I was sure that I had heard from God and my baby was coming. And from that point onwards, I started, I was on Pinterest, I was everywhere, baby shops, I was following them all because I was just getting ready and preparing myself for that blessing. And exactly a year after, I was holding my baby, not just pregnant, so holding my baby girl, a girl too, what we wanted. So this testimony is just to encourage anyone, especially if you're a believer, don't stop believing. There is a God, he does listen, he does hear, and most importantly, he answers prayer. So I've just been so blessed and so fortunate to have experienced this. And I just want to encourage anybody in any moments where you feel that all the physical things around you don't add up, just trust, you know, 
a God that's just bigger than you and I. And one day you'll have your happy ending. This video was brought to you by Amalina Children's Haven.